I think we'll leave it to Mark, please. <laughs> oh, I'm so embarrassed. Oh, my God. Anyways, I'm sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. I just want you to know that the performance you're going to hear tonight is going to be a lot better than the performance you heard from the guy just now. Believe me. I'm high school. Mike and Mark are a little more advanced than that. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Spotlight 2021. My name is David Globerman, and I am the coordinator of supporting cast, which is part of PAL Ottawa. Before we get started, and I know I've said this a couple times already, I would ask that everybody please mute your video and your mic, because we already have about 60 people that are, that are on, and uh, we're expecting over 200. And if you have your mic on and your video, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a heavy drain on the, um, on the broadband. Um, Pal Ottawa would like to acknowledge the generous support of the New Horizons program of the Department of Employment and Social Development Canada. We thank um, New Horizons for their fantastic support of uh, this festival as well as other uh, activities associated with the grant. Um, just a little bit about, about PAL Ottawa. Uh, for those of you that are new to PAL, uh, the organization is essentially provides um, affordable housing as well as um, health and social supports for retired and active arts workers age 55 and over. And that community um, in Ottawa, I believe is about 3,500 not all of which are part of Ottawa, but is, it is our intention to grow our membership like any organization and, and uh, have them become uh, active members of, of Ottawa. So um, this, um, our membership and, you know, members to be certainly keep us busy. And uh, we try to, you know, be responsive to the needs of, of this constituency. Um, you don't have to be, 55 and over to be a member of PAL, you can, you know, you can be a teenager or your 20s or 30s or whatever. So uh, I would encourage anybody that is under 55 that is here tonight to um, join PAL. And for more information about PAL Ottawa, I would encourage you to visit www.palottawa.org. That's www.palottawa.org. Um, so to mark the end of this fabulous arts festival uh, that, uh, that we started uh, back in, uh, in early February, um, this, uh, tonight's presentation is the 14th and last pr presentation of, uh, of the festival of Spotlight 2021. And I'm very pleased to um, announce that uh, we will be hearing um, uh, a recorded performance by musicians uh, Mike Trombley and Mark Ferguson. Uh, Mike
Hi, everybody. Welcome to this uh, concert brought to you by the fine folks at PAL, the Performance Art Lodge. My name is Mike Tremblay, and I'll be uh, speaking to you today about a few um, of the wonderful musicians in the history of jazz in Canada, uh, the wonderful composers. Um, and I'll also be playing a little saxophone along the way. And uh, my partner, Mark Ferguson, will be uh, playing some piano, and I'll just pass it over to him right now. Thank you, Michael. So the first tune that we played was written by one of the icons of jazz in Canada, Rob McConnell. And for many years, Rob ran a, a big band in Toronto called the Boss Brass. Um, it was a fantastic band featuring a lot of the great musicians, a lot of the great Canadian musicians, studio musicians and jazz musicians. And um, Rob, in his career, won uh, several Grammys and many Junos and... Uh, um, it w uh, was featured uh, in small bands and, and big bands alike. Uh, the first tune that we played was called 4BC, and it was written by Rob for one of his idols, Benny Carter, 4BC. Um, and now we're going to proceed with something else. Mike, over to you. Thank you, Mark. So our next tune, we're going to feature a work by the wonderful saxophonist composer Kirk McDonald. Um, Kirk has more than 50 CDs to his name, uh, numerous Juno Awards and uh, Juno nominations. He won the Haygood Hardy Jazz Award from SOCAN. Uh, he's won awards at the East Coast Music Awards, the Canada Council Awards, National Jazz Awards, Jazz Report Awards, and of course the Montreal Jazz Festival's Prix de Jazz. As an educator, he works uh, at Humber College been there for some time since he left Ottawa. Um, he's known and respected for his private instruction and master classes uh, throughout Canada and internationally. Uh, it's a common theme when speaking about a respected musician, when a great deal of that respect comes from the long line of fellow musicians who play the same instrument. Um, the name Kirk MacDonald is it's synonymous with saxophone respect. Uh, growing up in Ottawa, um, for me, knowing that Kirk was here, um, after several unsuccessful attempts at various teachers, uh, finally Kirk took me under his, his wing and, and took the time to really figure out how my brain worked and uh, helped me out so much and is one of the reasons why I'm still here playing 30 years later. One of the most interesting things about Kirk McDonald is, um, for me, uh, after six years of studying with him, um, every... Every year, I would, would listen to Kirk play, and, and he just kept getting better and better. And then as the years went on, you know, sometimes it's three years since I, uh, maybe I'll, I'll check on a new recording, or I'll run into him at a concert, and I'll hear him, and he's, he's still getting better. He just, it's, it's just amazing. So uh, the first tune we'd like to play from Kirk McDonald uh, is a tune entitled uh, Calendula.
Thanks very much. And the next uh, tune we're going to play uh, is a tune called Sheepwalking. Um, and that's a composition by um, Toronto saxophonist Mike Murley. Uh, since the 1990s, um, his first album, Two Sides, came out, um, which is at this moment uh, in my car in the CD player. Um, since then, Mike has played on 14 Juno Award-winning recordings. He's on faculty at the University of Toronto in the jazz program, frequently a guest, a guest faculty member at the Banff School for the Arts, um, and of course, uh, summer, several summer jazz camp programs. And that's where I first met Mike back in 1988. Uh, from that moment on, he has become one of my all-time favorite musicians. Uh, in the early 2000s, I invited Mike to come to Ottawa and be a guest artist at uh, the Ottawa Saxophone Camp. Uh, that year, we had more than 50 saxophonists in the camp, and uh, Mike just gave some fabulous master classes and private lessons uh, to more than a dozen of our students. I, sit on, I sat in on most of those lessons, and um, as an instructor myself, I still use many of Mike's practices and procedures today. Um, both Mark and I have a, a fond memory of playing a concert with Mike, um, and Ian Froman and bassist Tom McMahon, Ian Froman the drummer, uh, and Tom McMahon on bass. Um, we played a collection of originals uh, from Mike and Mark and a few from myself. Um, and uh, we, we did this as part of the Ottawa Saxophone Camp concert series. Um, and it was just such a, I always remember that, that, that feeling looking out over all those saxophone players in the audience, um, just glowing and being inspired. Uh, it was just a wonderful experience. Um, Mike is always so giving with his time and expertise and has inspired more than a generation of musicians. So we're going to play Sheepwalking. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
first tune we played tonight was by the great Rob McConnell, and we're going to feature another Rob McConnell tune now. Um, I first met Rob in 1976 when I attended a Phil Nimmons clinic in Fredericton. And uh, the um, faculty that year was the Phil Nimmons Quartet plus Rob McConnell and Mo Kaufman and Guido Basso. So it was a great experience, and I got to know Rob well, drove back to Ontario with him, actually, and uh, eventually studied arranging with him. Uh, Rob is primarily known as a great arranger, but he was also um, an excellent composer. And we're going to do another one of his tunes right now. This is called You Didn't Tell Me It Was Wrong. This, uh, this was recorded, by the way, by the Boss Brass, uh, featuring Guido Basso on flugelhorn. Mike Tremblay will play the part of Guido Basso tonight on tenor saxophone.
Next composer we're going to feature is uh, an Ottawa guitar player, a uh, wonderful guitarist. Uh, his name is Gary Elliott. Um, Gary was born in uh, Saint Lambert, Quebec, um, and then he moved to Ottawa not long after. Um, studied at uh, University of Ottawa. Um, he's one of the journeymen in Ottawa. He's been around and playing with uh, all kinds of wonderful musicians over the years, both on the on the classical and the jazz side. Uh, wonderful composer. He calls himself a, a bit of a lazy composer because he he says he only writes when they when the, the inspiration hits him. Um, but boy, I've enjoyed uh, playing with Gary. Uh, I was probably 21 when I started playing with Gary, and uh, we did uh, years at a place called Vineyards, uh, which uh, just is no longer in Ottawa. Um, Gary also does several collaborations with different musicians. Uh, does a beautiful duo with Steve Boudreau. Um, he, he's done some recording with Adrian Vidati and Camille Belil. Uh, and he also did a, a, a wonderful trio with Micah Sudri and Don Cummings. Over to Mark. Yeah, Gary and I started uh, Ottawa University together when we were, I think, probably both 17 years old. And uh, he had just arrived from Montreal and was known primarily as a classical guitarist at the time. But uh, since then, uh, Mike and I have played in, in a band with Jerry called Mermaid Beach, done several gigs, and... Um, uh, for a lazy composer, he's been pretty prolific. So uh, this is one of his tunes named for um, another Ottawa jazz stalwart, Jerry Helke, who died uh, several years ago. Um, so this is called One for Jerry. Thank you. 
And our next uh, Canadian composer we're going to be featuring is the wonderful Phil Nimmons. He's often referred to as the Dean of Canadian Jazz. Began his career in Vancouver in the 1940s. He attended Juilliard, Royal Conservatory of Music. Uh, led numerous bands, Nimmons and Nine, and later Nimmons and Nine Plus Six. And he's composed and arranged an astounding amount of material for a wide range of formats and styles, including big band film scores, contemporary chamber, and orchestra works. He's a, f a founding member of the Canadian League of Composers, co-founded the Advanced School of Contemporary Music with Oscar Peterson and Ray Brown. Phil had a major influence on establishing many jazz programs across Canada. He's taught at the University of Toronto, the Jazz Studies program for 45 years. Phil was awarded the inaugural Juno, inaugural Juno Award uh, in 1977 for the best jazz album. 2001, uh, Phil was inducted into the International Educators Hall of Fame for his total dedication to jazz and jazz education. In 2002, he received Canada's highest honor for an artist, the Governor General's Performing Arts Award for Lifetime Artistic Achievement for his enduring contribution to the performing arts in Canada. I had the pleasure of meeting Phil back in the 80s. Uh, it turned out to be one of the scariest moments in my life. Um, Every evening at that uh, camp, uh, there were faculty uh, and faculty guest concerts. The Humber Big Band, Faculty Band, Nimmons and Nine was there, Ed Bickert was there, Guido Basso, Mo Kaufman did a night. And one night we had the Pat LaBarber Latin Band, uh, sort of a small big band, all original charts. We're all looking forward to this, and uh, as we were filing into the auditorium after dinner for the concert, and the band was just finishing setting up, we realized one of the tenor players hadn't shown up. Phil Nimmons gets on the mic and says, where's Tremblay? Get him to get his horn. And I remember running back to my dorm room, assembling my horn, my hands were shaking, sitting down beside Alex Dean on stage, and of course, the first tune had a huge tenor solo for me to sight read. What a moment. I rem reminisced with Phil a few years back about the horror of that defining moment when we had him up at Canterbury High, Canterbury High School to do uh, a master class. Um, and I, I did him thank him for challenging me with that opportunity. So the, the tune that we're going to play from, from Phil Nimmons is a tune called Islands, and it's from the Atlantic Suite.
And Mark and I decided to uh, feature one of our own uh, works on this uh, on this concert. So um, the interesting thing about it is is uh, you know Mark and I have been together playing for for many years and uh, played a lot of Mark's tunes. And Mark thought it would be a good idea to how about we call each other's tune. So out of uh, the tunes that I have written over the years, Mark chose uh, Sam's Place. Uh, Sam is, of course, uh, Sam, my wife. And uh, when I met Sam, she was living in Montreal. And she had a great apartment. And uh, it was so nice to, to visit and, uh, and just hang out in Montreal. Um, love Montreal. So uh, wrote a tune entitled Sam's Place.
We're going to play one more tune by Rob McConnell. Uh, we've already done two. This is the third tune by Rob McConnell. And this is um, a tune that I never heard him do with a small band, but he uh, wrote a great arrangement of this for the Boss Brass for Big Band. And it featured Sam Noto and Mo Kaufman playing this fantastic bebop head in unison. And Mike and I are about to attempt to play it in unison right now. So this is called, it's one of those cryptic <coughs> titles that Rob McConnell would come up with. Uh, I didn't always understand them, and I don't know who Mrs. Beanheart is. But this tune is called Start with Mrs. Beanheart. Thank you. 
The next tune we're going to play by a great Canadian composer is by the wonderful pianist Rini Rosnes. Uh, Rini Rosnes moved from Vancouver to New York in the early 1980s, I believe, and uh, almost immediately began working with the bands of uh, Joe Henderson, Wayne Shorter, and J.J. Johnson. Um, really uh, an amazing uh, soloist. Uh, I heard her with J.J. Johnson in Montreal in the 1990s, and um, she really brought people out, out of their seats with every solo she played. It was quite amazing. This is a tune that I originally heard on a J.J. Johnson album called Tra uh, Tangents, and it's uh, arranged by R Robert Farnan. Beautiful arrangement. But uh, we boiled it down to a duo, and so Mike and I are going to do it um, as a duo. And this is called Malaga Moon. Thank you.
And now we're going to do one of my tunes. This is, um, I'm not sure if Mike picked this one or not. I think he picked a different one than I told him, no, we're going to do this one. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry, Mike. Um, this is a tune called Paradiso that I wrote uh, a few years ago. There was a, a club in Ottawa called uh, Cafe Paradiso that featured jazz several nights of the week. Um, and uh, the owner, Alex, kept it going for quite a few years. And it was really wonderful to have a place where you could go and play on a regular basis for an audience. With a real piano. With a real piano, exactly. Um, this tune was written as a tribute to Cafe Paradiso. It was also written as a bit of a tribute to one of my heroes, Chick Corea. And this is sort of appropriate timing because uh, Chick just died about uh, a month ago now. And um, so we, we were all in heavily influenced by Chick Corea and we miss him. Um, the first little part of the melody <laughs> sounds a lot like um, a well-known tune by Chick Corea called 500 Miles High. So um, this is a little tribute to Chick Corea, Paradiso. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
just wanted to thank everyone for attending this performance. Um, a huge round of applause um, for my partner, Mark Ferguson. Mm -hmm. And of course, a, a really big round of applause for the wonderful and talented Mike Mullen, uh, who's doing, uh, he's our sound engineer and uh, our video engineer uh, today and putting together this uh, whole program for us. So much appreciated, Mike Mullen. We'd also like to thank uh, the Gig Space Performance Studio. Uh, that's where we're at right now, uh, this lovely space with this great piano, and they're always uh, very helpful in the music community. So please support uh, Gig Space Performing Studio. Uh, that's the Alcorns, Marilee and Mark Alcorn. We'd also like to thank uh, the Musicians Association, Local 180, for their continuing support and hard work on behalf of musicians. Um, and of course, the wonderful folks at PAL, uh, Performance Art Lodge. Thank you very much for this opportunity, and uh, we hope you enjoyed the concert uh, today. Thank you. And I'd like to say thank you to my buddy Mike Tremblay for uh, playing this duo concert. It was a lot of fun. Always great to play with you, Mike. And we are going to finish off uh, the evening with a tune by probably Canada's most famous jazz musician of all time, I would think, for originally from Montreal, and that's Oscar Peterson. Um, probably, you know, one of the greatest pianists who ever lived. Uh, this is a tune that he wrote called Hymn to Freedom. He wrote it during the civil rights movement of the 1960s, and um, this is our rendition of Hymn to Freedom.
So if there aren't any more questions, um, I'd like to thank um, our feature presenters tonight, Mike Trombley and Mark Ferguson for an absolutely brilliant performance. Um, just looking at the chat function, I, the, the accolades and comments that came in are just uh, absolutely outstanding. So thank you very much, Mike and Mark for a fantastic uh, presentation. I would like to apologize, however, for the uh, broadcast. We did have a problem with uh, the interface between the high definition uh, recording of the presentation and our loading it through the Zoom, um, through the Zoom function. So there was a, there was, you, you probably, I'm sure you noticed the choppiness of the transmission. And um, this YouTube video uh, that, you're, that you're watching right now uh, should be a much better quality than you experienced during the actual original broadcast. So our apologies uh, regarding that. And, you know, as you know, working with Zoom for all of us is, is, uh, is, is a novelty and we're, you know, learning like everybody uh, as we go. And uh, certainly we hope that, uh, and we expect that in future broadcasts, uh, future streams by Palo Ottawa that the quality and the production will be better. So that's something that we all look forward to. Um, you'll be receiving an online survey in the near future that we very much, you, very much appreciate that you complete and return. Um, the, um, if you have any narrative comments or any you know, comments themselves, you can send them to me, David Globerman, at supportingcast at palottawa.com. I'm uh, sorry, supportingcast at palottawa.org. That's supportingcast at palottawa.org. And your feedback is very important to us as it informs our future programming. We want to know what we did right, what we did not so right, and uh, any ideas you have for, for future programming. Um, this, this Zoom uh, Pal, to, Pal YouTube recording will remain of Mike uh, Trombley and Mark Ferguson, will, will remain on the Pal YouTube channel for about a month or so until the end of April, and then we'll be taking it down. So. Uh, if you or your friends or colleagues want to revisit the recording, uh, please, I would encourage you to uh, go to the Pal YouTube channel, uh, you know, by the end of April as, as it'll be taken down. Um, the, the, this, this arts festival that, that we put on, which started in February, February the 3rd, to be exact, um, was really an opportunity to not only uh, provide education and enlightenment, enlightenment and entertainment to our audience, uh, our audience being from the Ottawa area, across Canada, across the United States, Europe, Australia, South America, all over, all over the world. Um, but it was also uh, an opportunity for us at Palo Ottawa to support our local arts workers I don't know if you know this, but our, the average uh, income of an arts worker is about $18,000 a year, which is really peanuts. Uh, $18,000 a year in Canada is about what the poverty line is. So given the fact that the last year, uh, you know, COVID has, has dramatically uh, impacted our arts workers and, you know, their level of income comes even less than what it norm normally is. So you can imagine uh, how important this arts festival ha has been. So um, I would uh, very much encourage you to uh, join PAL. It's, it's about $25 a year, which is really nothing. Uh, it'll give you uh, a sense of membership to a wonderful community. Uh, if you'd like to donate, make a donation to uh, PAL, you will receive a charitable receipt for that. And uh, whatever you feel comfortable with in, in uh, donating would be would be very much appreciated. I would also encourage you to, um, uh, you know, on the PAL YouTube channel to also look at uh, other 
the other performances that we've uh, carried out that we put on uh, over the last uh, couple of months um, to give you a sense of what uh, what we've done. Um, there's so many people to, to thank at the end of this festival. Um, so many, and I hope that uh, I hope I, I can mention all of them. But first of all, I'd like to thank the wonderful performers that spent a lot of time preparing their presentations and so eloquently putting them on for our audience. And I'll just read you all the names. Elizabeth Amos Stevenson, Dan Lalonde, Chris Ralph, Carmen Harris, Lola Ryan, Jody Christensen, Mark Boyle, Wendy Felberg, Kayla McSorley and Lisa Paquette, Charlene Lau Ahir, Yaja Romaniak, Allison Burns, and tonight, of course, Mike Trombley and Mark Ferguson. And uh, I don't know if you know this, but we looked at the stats uh, recently and we've had almost 2000 people that have actually um, registered for uh, our sessions for the 13 sessions we put on. Almost 2000 people, that's, that's a lot, especially given this is the first uh, Zoom Arts Festival that Palo Alto has put on. And as far as our PAL YouTube videos are concerned, almost a thousand people have actually viewed these videos. So this is absolutely wonderful. And uh, if and when, and I hope it's when, you, you view, view these uh, videos, and many of them will not be up you know, forever, um, I would encourage you to click like and, and share and provide any comments that, that um, you feel are relevant to your experience. Finally, I would like to acknowledge the people behind the scenes, the people that made this uh, wonderful arts festival possible. I mentioned at, at the onset of, of this broadcast, um, uh, the New Horizons Program of Employment and Social Development Canada. They most generously provided us with funds to put on this uh, arts festival, Zoom, uh, PAL, uh, this PAL Arts Festival, uh, Spotlight 2021, uh, as well as other uh, endeavors associated with the New Horizons grant. So I'd like to acknowledge um, New Horizons of ESDC once again. I would like to acknowledge and thank the Board of Directors of, um, of Pal Ottawa, um, particularly Ann Mayhew, who is our board member and uh, is, the, um, is the head of the supporting cast committee of which I am part. Um, I would like to acknowledge uh, our chair of Pal Ottawa, Peter Haworth, um, other members of Pal, uh, Nancy Oakley, our tech, uh, our tech magician, Barry Sims, um, and uh, other people uh, with PAL, such as Julie Hodgson, Michael Namer, Nancy Oakley, um, our adjudicators uh, for, the, uh, for the grant, uh, Mary Ellis, Laura Taller, and Last but definitely not least, I would like to acknowledge the incredible work of our communications consultant, Matthew Behrens, who worked tirelessly to put on this uh, arts festival. There's a lot of work uh, that go goes on behind the scenes to make this happen. A tremendous amount about this, this arts festival. So I'd like to acknowledge the wonderful work the eloquent work of, uh, of Matthew in, in making all this happen. And last, um, this festival would really be nothing without you, the audience, the people that took the time of their busy schedule to register for, uh, for these 13 sessions, uh, to show up, to provide comments on the chat line, to encourage us, to visit our PAL YouTube channel, to you know, support our organization, PAL Ottawa. Um, we really could not do it without you. And, and it's so wonderful to know that we have viewers from all over the world. You know, Zoom, you know, it's probably not the greatest medium to hold these events, but it's, it's all we really have given this horrible pandemic. At the same time, 
on the flip side, it's allowed us to really um, connect with people from all over the world. And I mean that literally, we've had, we've had uh, an incredible representation right across Europe, United Kingdom, South America, United States, Canada, all over the place. And I'm sure that in any future uh, festivals that we have or any other broadcasts, streaming, if you will, um, that representation will, will continue. So I, I, I really thank you, the audience, for making this uh, the success that, that, are, that, that it really has turned out to be. So I don't have anything else to say except um, uh, it's too bad this festival can't go on forever, but you know we only have limited resources and I really hope that uh, you, the audience, have enjoyed it. So um, thank you again for being part of, uh, of our festival. Please stay connected with Pell Ottawa because uh, we, we have a lot of other programming that is going to take place, particularly between April and uh, um, June of this year. And uh, just be part of our wonderful community as it's, as it's growing. And do think about donating, making a charitable donation, as well as becoming a member of Pal Ottawa. So with that, I say good night. I bid you adieu, au revoir. Stay safe and stay engaged. It's the it's you know connecting and 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 practicing or appreciating the arts is so important for our you know our physical, mental, emotional, spiritual uh, health and development. And what a what a better way to do it than staying connected to Palo Alto. So thank you again. Please take care, be well, and hope to see you soon. Good night.